It's the Muppet History Podcast with your host, Joshua Gillespie, and featuring Madison Mantis. Yay! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joshua Gillespie, creator of Muppet History, and this is the Muppet History Podcast. I am joined, as always, by my good friend, Madison Mantis. Hello, hello. Now, before we get into our uh, news discussion, we thought with this being the first episode, why don't we tell you all a little bit about ourselves? And I'm going to let my good friend Madison go first. Of course you will. Um, So my Muppet history pretty much starts when I was born. Um, my brother is actually about 10 years older than me, so he actually grew up um, at the height of Muppet Babies and Fraggle Rock actually airing. Um, mm. So we, yeah, like he remembers watching Muppet Babies like Saturday morning cartoons. So yeah. um, we had a couple of those like HBO home videotapes of uh, Fraggle Rock. So um, I kind of got it from him, I guess. Um, my mom said apparently the first movie that I actually sat down and paid attention to was The Muppets. I didn't necessarily. Which one? Oh, oh sorry. The Muppet movie. I don't. I don't okay. know why. Yeah. So uh, the Muppet movie. Um, I mean, my first words were Muppet Babies. Um, As most babies' first words should I, be. I know. More or less. But she said, like, my first coherent words were Muppet Babies. Like, I, there's a videotape of me running around the house just saying, uh, Great Muppet Caper, Kermit, Fozzie, Piggy. Like, I literally was just naming oh. Muppets. So, um, I mean, my mom said I didn't. I wasn't necessarily into cartoons, I guess, um, besides Muppet Babies, just because I some yeah, I somehow knew that like those were the characters. They were the same characters. So Muppets from Space was the first mm, I mean, I did I did watch Muppet Treasure Island. I mean, the Muppet movie was the first one I actually like watched. Actually the first movie I watched. But I saw Muppets from Space in theaters. And that day on, uh, until I was maybe about six or seven, Gonzo was my imaginary friend until I, I launched him into space on my swing set. Because clearly I didn't get what he was trying to say in the movie where he wants to, you know, his family is like right here. But I was like, you need to be with your alien family. So I put him on the swing set and launched him back. So you deported there. Gonzo. I deported Gonzo. Sorry. Shout out Gonzo. I miss you, buddy. But um, <laughs> So um, I also kind of feel lucky to be kind of kind of a part of like that age of like the early Internet because Muppet Central was a thing. So yeah. anytime I ever really wanted to like look anything up, I, I was just like constantly on there on Wikipedia. Like, I mean, I'd watch the Muppet show and be like, OK, who did that voice? And then eventually, as I got older, I could literally sit there and I would play this game with myself where every character that talked, I'd be like. That's Jerry Nelson. That's Richard Hunt. So I would I like. Bet you were a hoot in school. I, uh, you know what? I actually kind of got made fun of for liking the Muppets. Not too much. I tried to like hide it, um, but I kind of owe that to my sense of. Oh, sorry, I almost choked. Um, <laughs> That'd be a fun first episode. I'm so choked up. Um, I kind of <laughs> would say that I can credit that to me being so into like old show business and variety shows and, yeah. and like knowing all these like old comedians. I mean, my parents were really into comedy and my, my grandpa actually um, was a part of one of the first uh, groups at Second City in Chicago, which I uh, oh, wow. went to. Yeah, I mean, he didn't, he wasn't really into the improv games, so he kind of dipped out of that and just did stand up but um yeah. so i mean i kind of grew up on that and i i credit the muppet show for kind of me being who i am and um i mean i i tried to hide it away and then once they started getting a little bit more popular i kind of got fomo because i would be like you like the muppets no i've liked the muppets my entire life <laughs> so is that fomo or just being pretentious being uh <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually wearing a shirt from The Onion right now that says, I appreciate the Muppets on a deeper level than you. If I had a nickel for every time I get sent that. <laughs> I know. My DMs are flooded with I that. finally just posted it on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, guys, I got the shirt. I know. Shut up now. Shut up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the reason why they have stuck with me this whole time um, was they are just just weird and zany and that's kind of how i am too um yeah. and it's just classic comedy like you don't really get it to is. see that variety show type 
you know, genre anymore. And, um, you know, and they're just, it's just so warm and fuzzy just watching them. Like, I, yeah, I, I imagine they are all that foam and fur, all that foam and Antron bet, fleece. My gosh. I bet <laughs> but, it is um, quite warm and fuzzy. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't want to get cheesy. Uh, yeah. I mean, they've just been a part of my life this entire time. Yeah. So, um, what about you? What's your Muppet history, Mr. Muppet history? My Muppet history starts when I was born. Well, my Muppet history really started when I was born. <laughs> um, I mean, hey, most of I us. I was born with a rare heart defect called hypoplastic left heart syndrome, where the left side of my heart did not form completely. And I had to go through a three-stage surgery that it started... When I was, they did the first procedure when I was like five days old and the last procedure wow. when I was like a little over a year old. Um, but it was during the second surgery that I was more aware, you know, I wasn't just kind of asleep. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so you were, you were, um, what's the word? Conscious. Conscious. There we go. That's yeah. the word for it. Yeah. Um, And so they needed something to entertain me. Now, I have two older brothers who are three and six years older than me. So they kind of grew up on the Muppets as well. And we just happened to have a stash of Muppet VHS tapes that had Mm -hmm. been released around that time. So it was, okay, well, that's what we'll show them. And something about it just immediately hooked and my first word was Elmo. Aww. And there is video of me sitting in my high chair holding my little plush Elmo and my mom going, who is that? And I just, Elmo, Elmo, Elmo. Aww. And then there's video of uh, one of the tapes on TV and my mom goes, who is that, Joshua? Elmo. <laughs> so... Elmo made me happy. And that's all that mattered to my parents was, you know what? We will watch this tape until, until two in the morning. If we have to, if that makes that little boy happy, (laughs) it got to the point where the nurses in the hospital would be like, Oh, this is my favorite part coming up. Oh my gosh. I love this one. (laughs) Cause it was the, uh, it was the best of Elmo. Yeah. uh, The original VHS of that. Did that, we did that one have the um, happy tapping with yes, Elmo on it? Yes, it did. And yes. that, that's the one they said was their favorite part. That it was, is. It's oh so God. good. I love that. It's love so catchy. It. Um, so that re- is really where it all started. And then um, I just really, until DVDs became a big thing, I just watched those same VHS tapes over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> Um, similar to you, I did get made fun of it in school, kind of, um, more, it was, it's really because the time I, the time we grew up in was where the Muppets were more so associated with Sesame Street more than anything else. So if you said, I like the Muppets, you're pretty much saying, oh, I still watch Sesame Street and being a 10 year old saying, I watch Sesame Street didn't really uh sit didn't seem to sit well with other kids Mm -hmm. (laughs) but um also similar to you muppets from space wasn't the first movie i ever saw but it was one of the first ones i saw i think i was three i still have my ticket from when we went and saw it back when movies were still like four dollars oh my god yeah i think Um, mine says like I remember seeing the ticket at one point and I think there was like a picture of it somewhere and it said like three ninety four. I'm like, yeah. oh, inflation. Like, like, man, yeah. when I was about I'd say nine or ten, I disco- I also discovered the Muppet Central and Tough Pigs and Muppet all that. I was a big fan of the Muppet Central radio station they had. That was oh one yeah, I remember that. Live three sixty five. Um it's I think it's still up actually. I think it is. Um but I had a recording program and I would try to record the songs they were playing, but for whatever reason, I, I this might have been my fault or the fault of technology at the time, but it just did not sound good. It did you like also a, did you also try to uh, download them from LimeWire because that was totally like no, our era. I didn't have I 
I didn't get into that kind of stuff till I was in high school. When the Muppets 2011 movie was coming out, that's when the Muppets became kind of cool again. And that's mm-hmm. when I started talking about being a Muppet fan. But it was really nice to discover stuff like Muppet Central and be like, oh, I'm not alone. There are people who like the Muppets. Mm-hmm. That's pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's my Muppet history before i started this whole youtube thing but i i think that's a discussion for another time go check out his youtube Woo! with that out of the way it's time to go into our news segment that we call our news segment uh we saw kermit the frog on the masked singer apparently everyone did because that went super duper viral it really did. And I think people were upset because he got kicked off right away, I guess. I think there was uh-huh. some kind of upset. Yeah. Um, I, but I really liked it, though. It was cute. And uh, hearing Kermit the Frog singing Hall and Oates was like, it, it was a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for me. My Instagram name is Hall and Oates Meal. Like, I mean, come on. But. No, it was great. And was. I, I really I really like how they executed it where they could hide Matt in the whole snail costume. It was so yeah. cute. He could tap his little foot. And the way and the way he popped out of the shell was the cutest thing ever. Oh my god. I think everybody kind of was like, oh, because he's got those tiny little hands. Uh-huh. Um, but they had um let's see, Jenny McCartney, like right away. She's like, he's got like a Kermit the Frog pushing out. Yeah. So I mean, they got it right away. Oh, um, yeah. They, Unfortunately, it was off the first episode, but it was really cool to see that and really cool to see that they have more of a presence and oh, people yeah. being excited about it. Well, you know, for a while they had the Muppets appearing as like contestants on like Hollywood Squares or yeah. things like that. And I would love to see a return to that, like have uh, Fozzie on the Wheel of Fortune or oh my God, that would be wonderful. Pepe as The Bachelor. Oh my God. See, at first... So I I was going to mention like, you know, what we would want to see the Muppets on like reality TV show wise. And at first I was thinking Piggy, like for the Bachelorette. But honestly, Pepe for that would be a blast. It would be hilarious. Obviously, I love those old interviews with Jim Henson where he was just sitting there with the character. Mm -hmm. To me, that's just different. Like, it's not Jim Henson. And I love Matt Vogel. I love all these performers, but they don't Mm -hmm. have the name like jim yeah you say, that's true you say we're gonna have jim henson on the show it's like oh i know who that is you say we're yeah. gonna have matt vogel it's like who but then you say we're gonna have kermit the frog oh yeah right and, and that's it's unfortunate yeah. it's unfortunate but it's yeah also the, the truth yeah um i mean hopefully you know he will get to that point ho- um hopefully the performers will start to get the recognition they deserve more spotlight Um, yeah because they're all absolutely wonderful i mean um i think he's doing a really good job with kermit he is um it it definitely took some getting used to but i think with more time to work on it you know Mm -hmm. and that's really that's really how it is for anyone who you know inherits a character you know. Right. Those legacy characters that they, you know, it's it's a lot to take on. And, and Matt even talks about that in his uh, his podcast, Below the Frame. He always asks people, like, how does it feel to take on a legacy character like that? And yeah, um, I can't I mean, they imagine. All, no. And they all say it's, it's very hard, but I think they're all doing absolutely fantastic. I have the I have no complaints. Eric Jacobson. Oh, oh my, gosh. my gosh. The work. Sometimes I can't even tell no, the difference. No, I, I posted the uh, Grover smell like a monster old video. And people are like, oh my gosh, Frank Oz is amazing. I'm like, that ain't Frank. That ain't Frank. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. No, he's been, I mean, yeah, those earlier stuff that he started, I sometimes like it's, it's almost like indistinguishable. So. um, And like, obviously for some characters, it'll never sound like the original voice, but that's. Right. You can't help that. And it's also, we, I mean, we both were, you know, we're in our late 20s and we grew up, I mean, yes, with Jim's Kermit, of course, but mainly Steve Whitmire. And yeah. um, so to most people who aren't like super mega fans, that's the Kermit that they know. Yeah. And now this whole generation, Matt's going to be the Kermit that they know. Exactly. So, you know, someday 
if, you know, he's not doing it anymore, people are going to be upset again. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's okay because, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame that as amazing, as wonderful as social media can be, it's also a place where everyone can complain. Right. Exactly. About things that, you know, it's just like. Right. And it's not even, it's, I mean, I went on a a rant about it too. It's not just the voice. It's the performance. It's the heart. It's It's, exactly. If it feels like the character, I've had people ask me there, people have been like, do you think they should have Miss Piggy be performed by a woman? I was like, if, yeah, if the person can embody the character and live to her, continue that spirit, then yes. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Yeah. Exactly. And at the end of the day, if we don't get new performers, we don't get more Muppets. Exactly. So, so. it's it's something, it's like, if you're a mega fan, like, just, just give them a chance because these People are already, you know, they're all amazing performers and it might not be exactly the same, but that's okay because they are doing, it can't be a carbon copy. No. You know, everybody, they're, they're hired for a reason. They're wonderful it's, performers. It's not and just they, about doing an impression. Right. Exactly. And that's the bottom line, people. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, speaking of the Muppets continuing on. Have you seen the Muppet Babies reboot that they have on Disney Junior? Yes. That what, I, that's what it's called, right? Disney Junior? Yeah, Disney Junior. Okay. Yeah. I I love it. I think it's adorable. I've only seen maybe 10 episodes of it because I saw the first two because they were like mm-hmm. when it premiered and it was more of a, I'm watching it to see if it's if it holds true. Up. If it stays, yeah. stays true. Yep. And then when I saw that it did, I was like, okay, I don't need to see this anymore. I'm not the demographic for it. <laughs> Right, exactly. I think it definitely is more like preschool oriented because the first yeah. one definitely had those and kind of like Sesame Street. I mean, just the Muppets in general, like they try to be able to appeal to the adults who have to sit there yeah. and watch it with their kids. So I think this is definitely more preschool oriented um, as opposed to the original 80s but, Muppet Babies. But yeah. it still has those Easter eggs for oh, fans yeah. like us. And, um, that, and bringing in baby versions of the familiar Muppet characters, you know, unlike Mario Kart, yeah. we're not getting just flooded with random babies that nobody wants. The babies that we really want. The the the, the definitive babies. <laughs> the definitive babies. And the ones that they also didn't have in the original because yeah. um they had baby Bean and uh Kid Bonson. Janice. Kid Janice. Yeah, that was like what, like one or two. That was episodes. a strange one. That was a, it was a little weird. I would have liked to see her more, but a little weird. Um, but just the fact that she's like, uh, like older than seven, them, seven, and then they're all like toddler. You know, I just assume that Animal's the youngest of the band. And oh yeah. Like, I I feel like in Muppet World, the Muppets are like in their maybe like late twenties, mid thirties, and Doctor yeah. Teeth is like forty, fifty. Like, <sniffs> who's this new baby we're talking about? So the. One of the latest episodes introduces baby Sam Eagle, He's who so he is. He is taking the internet by storm and he is precious. I did watch the episode that he was in and I really like how they did his character where he wants to participate, but he also needs time to himself. Yeah, exactly. He's more reserved and he's yes. a little less zany than the other ones. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, and that's how yeah. I've always seen Sam is like he's very he he has a lot of walls around him. But once they ca- when Kermit and them can kind of tear them down, it's like, oh yeah, I want to be a part of this. Right. Exactly. I think um, I think he was a really good one on there. That's a good lesson for kids. It too. is. Like, I mean, you don't always have to. Maybe, you know, you can leave your friends alone, like include them. But, yeah. you know, if they want to be alone by themselves doing their own thing, like that's, that's You got to just let them do that. You got to let them do it. And then they went all out and did uh, had Scooter and Skeeter on an episode where I think they've been in several. But one mm-hmm. I saw was they were like the girls wanted to go do makeup and the boys wanted to go ride motor motorbikes or something like that and so skeeter joins piggy and them for that and scooter goes with them and then at the end of the episode it's surprise we switched places oh i love that scooter wanted to do makeup but they didn't they were like we don't 
we were scared you were gonna think we were weird and Aww. and then Fozzie goes uh, why don't why wouldn't I want to have a spa day I love that just like letting kids just like do your thing like exactly if Josh if you want to go play with dolls I don't care I'll go play with a truck I really like the voices they have for this Muppet Babies reboot, especially that Matt Daner or Danner, however you pronounce I it. I think it's, I believe it's Danner because I watched his uh, Emmy uh, no- nominate. Well, no, his Emmy win, and they said Ooh, they said Danner. True. So that's right. This is the award winning Muppet Babies reboot. Uh, Emmy award winning reboot. But yeah, his his Kermit voice is really good. I like it a lot. I think it's like. Sorry, Frank Welker. Love you. Love you so much. You've done amazing work. I like it better. Yeah. And I like, uh, is it Eric Bauza? Eric Bauza. Bauza. Yeah. Eric Bowser. Uh, I love, <laughs> I really like his voices he's done. Like they feel like you hear it and you know what character mm-hmm. it's supposed to be. Yeah. He did, I think he did Sam for that new episode too. I wouldn't surprise because me. I, I could just hear it because it's kind of like that throaty, like, because Fozzie's like, he's kind of... Ah, gonna... Yes. So hey, funny. there you go. Yep, exactly. So you could totally hear that because, obvi- you know, of course, all of Frank's characters were, you know... They had a little bit of similarity between them all. Yes, exactly. Like, you could... I mean, once you say, like, oh, these are the same, then it's like, oh, okay. And then you, you throw know, this I, piggy I... in there and they're like, wait, what? And then, yeah, and then they're just dumbfounded. Mind it's blown. a man? <laughs> it's the beauty of it yeah it really is um so yeah this muppet babies reboot i'm i'm so glad that it's successful and i know there's plenty of people Mm -hmm. who are like no they're just trying to market the muppets to kids and it's like well if that means a new generation is going to grow up on the muppets at a younger age and seemingly learn some really good lessons then i say i'm all for Mm -hmm. it so earlier you said that Muppet Babies was your first word. So did you, you so I'm guessing you watched reruns of it. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. My for some reason I always I think one of the first ones I remember was um at the they episode were on Nick Jr. Yes, they were. I don't think I ever watched them on Nick Jr. though. That's where I saw them. I th- I know I had the tapes for sure. Yes. The Valentine's one, uh when Rolf he's got like Nanny makes cookies with their faces on it, and his is missing. And his, yeah, like his isn't done yet, or something yeah, like or that. something like that. And he's all sad about it. The songs in that were great. The too. songs in the original Muppet Babies were. Oh yeah. The one I remember, and I still say it's my favorite episode, was the one where Gonzo wants Piggy to like him, but she obviously doesn't. And then there's like a really catchy song in it. It's like look a little bit closer, <gasps> yeah. a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. I re- oh, doesn't he do like the Cyrano de Bergerac? Yeah, yes, and that parody. My, yeah, and it has my favorite, my favorite line: "Roses are red, violets are blue. I like my big nose, and you like it too." too. Yep. Oh my or, gosh, Gonzo, is that you? Yep, with hey, nani, nani, and ha cha cha. Oh my god, yeah, because he was doing a Jimmy Durante thing. Yes. Oh my. Is god. that who it was supposed to be? Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Durante was like a famous. Um, he popularized that song "Smile." The smile. Yes. Your heart okay. Is. Yeah, the Joker he did. Song. Yeah, yeah, and he had a big old nose. So. Okay. Yeah, he was like like mega vaudeville star. Um, that's what I liked about Muppet Babies. And I think that's another reason why I grew up knowing all these like older references because of Muppet Babies, because they would insert these jokes and these clips. Like, I mean, do do you think like they had to pay a bunch of royalties for this other, uh, um, I I think there's a whole thing about if it's on television or not on video. Okay. Well, cause they were on video. That's what I saw. Some of them were. I have no idea. And honestly, that's probably why we won't see it on Disney Plus for a long time. Or even if at all, if unfortunately. At all, yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So, I, I, definitely... I mean, at least we've got this reboot that's gen- generally good. That's... It's really like. It's cute. I'm not the. We're not the demographic for it, but it's the kind of thing where, you know, I'll see an update that's like, oh, look. 
baby sweetums is on this episode or baby sweetest chef and it's like oh that's really cool i can't <laughs> wait to do i can't wait until they have like the whole band on there like baby yes. floyd baby zoot oh oh it'll be so cute and i know i know they're gonna it's, we'll and that to can it. be like where they meet animal and he joins the well i know they have a picture of dr teeth I, he's more yeah. he looks more like a kid or like a teenager but they have like yeah. those easter eggs in the back like they have like baby phenomena and the the snows the east the easter eggs in the show are just phenomenal and they always say like there's going to be even more even more like yeah so um i really I'm, like that they're doing that for and, the, the and they viewers. go deep they die deep like there's one part where where there's one part where nanny like is looking at her key ring or something like that and one of the things on it is a is a like keychain of waldo from muppet vision 3d no way yes oh my god that's and amazing I was like, that's awesome waldo sucks but that's amazing <laughs> sorry that's a discussion hot, for another time hot take but waldo sucks anyway that's a, that's a discussion for another time so yeah, Muppet Babies reboot. If you got kids or if you grew up watching it, give it a chance. It's it's cute. It's it's cute. Very cute. It, it's faithful to the original. And that's what we like to see. And there's and and they, thankfully, it can be released on Disney Plus. I mean, it does they... more of like it does it does more of like tributes as opposed to actually just using the footage. Right. Exactly. Which I appreciate. Um. So what else do we got? Oh, do you see that picture of uh, Uncle Traveling Matt? Yes. Out and about. Speaking of reboots. He's back in outer space. He is back in outer space uh, learning things from us silly creatures. Uh, we, we don't really know much about it, though. I know that they're filming. Um, John Tartaglia posted a picture of him. Well, he's been in Canada. I know that. That's, yeah. And that's they cool are, that they're, that's, they're filming I'll it in Canada it. again. Calgary. Calgary. Yeah, that's right. Um, but that was, that had to be in, that was in California, right? Yeah. Filming yeah. started on January 25th of this year. What I think is really cool is it says that pre-production on the series began in fall 2020 under the working title Raffinus. Now, Raffinus is the Latin word for radish. What? And radish is in oh, my God. <laughs> um. That's pretty rad. Now, that's did pretty you rad. Watch... That's pretty rad for this. <laughs> now, did you watch the Fraggle Rock Rock On shorts they did last year? Uh, I, I did and I didn't. Um, Very, very little of it. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. It just wasn't. I. It was a little weird to get used to the format of them being like. You know, separated yeah they're there i mean they basically well it kind of came out it was a height. covid show it was they yeah came out at the height of the pandemic so they made it yeah. so like the fraggles are but the thing is like they already like wembley and go 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 that was go go wembley and gobo already like live together so it's like yeah. how are they not quarantining together where the heck are you like yeah, you know so that yeah. that was a little off to me but I think it was definitely a good idea, especially. Like it was, it was cute. It was, it was, it was better than the celebrity singing Imagine, which was also around that same time. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> Honestly. So, but I, I liked it. I thought it was a cute way of bringing these characters back. Yes, I think so too. And then these other kids are going to. You know, they'll they'll get more used to them, I guess. Because it's uh, Fraggle yeah. Rock isn't necessarily super easily accessible. Is it on HBO Max? It's on Apple TV. Oh yeah, because Apple owns Fraggle Apple, Rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Which okay, whatever. I mean, it was. Um, I like Apple. Um, it's six episodes of it, so. Yeah, not something you can get through in about less than an hour. Yeah, because um, they're all like eight, eight minutes, five minutes, five, five yeah, minutes. Five, yeah, eight, yeah, yeah. They're short little things. Yeah. But after that was so successful, I don't know if it was already in the works or if this was kind of the what greenlit it. But they announced they're doing a full on reboot where it's not just going to be the Mupp or the Fraggles uh, hanging out in different places. It sounds like it's going to be a new take. On, or not even a new take, but a. Con it honestly sounds like it could be a continuation. 
you know what? That could very much be a thing. I don't. I, don't I would really not know be who, against that. I honestly don't know too much about it. Um, which is which is fine because then you Reading know that Lisa Henson is executive producer, co-executive producers Dave Goals and Karen Prell. Love that. that it, it's it's got the right people attached oh, yeah. to it for sure. Like. And then for and, uh, voices, who do we have for newcomers? So Dave, newcomers, we've got. John Tartaglia is um, doing Gobo, which love and, it. Um, Frankie Cordero is Wembley. Yeah, he's um, I wouldn't say a veteran, but he's definitely a big Sesame Street he's guy. Bi- now. Yeah, big Sesame Street. Yeah, it's nice that um, Dave Goals is still Boober and Matt. Uncle Matt. Fraggle. Yeah, good old Uncle and Matt. And Donna Kimball as Moki Fraggle. So I kn- the only thing I pretty cool. Yeah, the only thing I really know about her is I know she did Happy Time Murders, which we'll she have was to- actually Agra in the new Dark Crystal series. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm I'm really excited to see. And the reboot. she's part of Earth to Ned as well which we'll have to talk about that another time we'll have to talk about that on its own thing honestly i love There's, it that's all i'm gonna say i'm so glad that we have so much muppet stuff to talk Just about muppet and henson like it's yes when we were when we grew up there was nothing it was like slim pickings like you had your we, movies we, we, and we, that was it you'd get you'd get a oh kermit and piggy are gonna be on the view and it's like Oh, Great. I'm not up at that okay. time in the morning. And I don't know who these other ladies are because, you know, I'm eight years old and don't care. They all yell at each <laughs> other. They all yell. Um, but and then and then the occasional occasional like Super Bowl commercial yeah. for Pizza Hut or uh, Toyota. Yeah, really. But <laughs> so so it's nice to be getting a regular regularly happening stream of muppetness a regular again, slew of muppet mayhem which it's just so wonderful it's refreshing especially during this time where we're all stuck inside still for hopefully not for much longer but yeah this has been really definitely keeping me going so it's nice to see these familiar faces coming back like who would have ever predicted fraggle rock coming back Especially because they had that movie planned for so long. Yeah, the jo- Joseph Gordon-Levitt was supposed to be. Yeah, and then like that. it just it became development hell, where it was like, oh, we're still working on it. We're still working on. It. We're still. We're, it's still yeah, happening. It was for me for some reason. It was just because it. it the Henson and like the Muppet stuff wasn't necessarily like going as much as it is right yeah. now. It was kind of like a, I read it and then it was like a, well, I'll believe it when I see and, a thing. So yeah. I, I wasn't really hanging on too hard. Um, but now that, you know, now I can, I can believe rumors for yeah, certain things and be like, yeah, okay. I think that's going to happen. Wonderful. And speaking of Fraggle Rock, I'm excited to announce that the long awaited Fraggle Rock, the ultimate visual history will be released in August of this year. Not too far away. Not too far away. Um I believe you can pre-order you it. You can. Um they these are the same people who well the same publishers who did the um Dark Crystal and Labyrinth Ultimate Visual Histories and I have both of them and they are amazing. What I love about these books is it's not just like some interviews or some art here and there they include like like the dark crystal one includes the original manuscript that jim oh, henson wow. wrote like the whole like, thing yeah wow and it's like a pull out like you can hold it and re- <laughs> it's like oh man it's ridiculous and i love wow. stuff like this so to have fraggle rock now <laughs> this is yeah i so, think this is going to be a really cool one and speaking of history books, we are also getting this Sam and Friends book done by Craig Shimon that has been in the works for a while. Honestly, seemingly. I'm I'm mega excited about this one. I am too. I Craig does such good work. He really does. For some reason, for some reason, if you don't know who Craig Shemin is, uh, he has been a uh, staff writer for the Jim Henson Company. Um, he did the first season of the Webulous World of Dr. Seuss. 
Um, he's kind of a little bit of everything. And he's married to Stephanie DeBruzzo from Sesame mm. Street, which I actually didn't know until like a couple months ago. And I was huh. like, it was kind of like one of those, whoa, like, what? yeah. Along with this Muppet Babies reboot, Fraggle Rock reboots and books and books and books. We also now have the Muppet Show on Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. And that is going to be our main topic discussion, which we will get to right after this word from our sponsor. Funding for the Muppet History Podcast is made possible by the amazing people who support our Patreon. By joining, you'll get project updates, early access to things we're working on, as well as bloopers and even monthly exclusive episodes of the Muppet History Podcast and Q&As. We have even more planned for the future, so join now and be part of Muppet History. Thank you to everyone who keeps us going, and now back to the show. And we're back. So now it's time for our main discussion of this episode, which is going to be The Muppet Show on home video. With The Muppet Show now being available on Disney+, Plus, I thought it would be fun to just kind of go through the history of the releases. What, you know, got us here to finally having all five seasons available. Because it has been a Finally. long journey. Oh my God. You asked for it and they eventually delivered. It, it, it took forever. It's been seeing that stupid D23 uh, concept art for yeah. uh, season four. It hurt. With Gonzo on it. Like it, it that photo of it, it, that photo of him haunts me because it took so long. It, it is my it is my sleep paralysis demon. And it, it also weird angle of his nose, yeah. honestly. So the Muppet show was actually not released like as a full episode until the mid 90s originally it started as these compilation tapes released by this playhouse video which was part of cbs fox back when they were oh, wow. both working when they worked yeah I forgot exactly. that was even they worked thing. together for real they were themed to certain things. So it'd be like, oh, these are Miss Piggy and Kermit. Like it was like the love story of Kermit and Piggy or the weirdest stuff on the show with Gonzo, stuff like that. And the thing I like so much about these tapes is the fact that it's not just segment after segment. Mm -hmm. Like there's actually like some story around it where it's like Gonzo. He's like sitting on a like a chair. He's kind of like in his living room. They're doing like a masterpiece theater type thing. Yeah, and he pretends that Camilla's like his butler. <laughs> and she's like, wait, what? And he's like, just go with it. Like Exactly. Or uh, there was one where it was Kermit and Fozzie cleaning out an attic. And they were finding items that were related to each uh, segment that they would show. And I, I love it because it gives us more of these characters. Mm -hmm. And... It feels nostalgic for a show that had only ended like five years earlier. What time? What um, year was the first one? What year were, the first one? They started out? releasing in 1985. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it's because of these um, in between segment things these these wraparounds, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Um, that now these tapes are ridiculously expensive. Oh yeah, and it does really matter on which one you're getting i don't know if it's a i was gonna say it probably depends on what's on there it it really does and i i mean we weren't around at the time so i don't know what the availability was like for some of these like if some were more produced than others right like um like i imagine these maybe you know that it was probably home video was really kind of still a new thing when these came out right um so the whole reason that these tapes have their storylines throughout is because jim was like wait this is a whole new medium i can't just release this i want to make something to be a part of i want to make this a uh, its own exclusive thing i want to make it unique i want to give it a reason to exist mm -hmm. Yeah, he seemed like he was really into basically whatever's new he wanted to jump on board with it exactly he wanted to see what he could get out of it and that's right That'll be that's a discussion for another time, but for sure, you know, just the fact that even something so simple as segments of the Muppet Show, he was like, "No, we got to make storylines to go along with them. Yeah. We got to theme them to these things. We got to." What I love is the fact that these feel like if the Muppet Show had had clip show episodes, 
this is what they would have been. Mm -hmm. So maybe I don't know who owns these segments, these individual segments. It would be really cool to see this kind of thing on Disney Plus. Yeah, I think so. That'd be it. It would just be a different way to enjoy see it. These I guess. Segments. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah, because those are. I mean, that's not something that because a lot of these, like I watch. Um, well, did you did you have any of these personally? Um, growing up, no. Okay. Yeah, I have I have some now, but growing up, no. Now, when you got them, how much did you pay? I'm just curious. I think the most I paid for one was. $35. Yeah, because the one that I'm looking at right now, the Kermit and Piggy story one, that one on eBay is going for like $29.95, but that's really the only one that I see. But uh, yeah, I don't think, I feel like look like looking at the... Um, look up the uh, rock music with the Muppets that or country music with the Muppets. Those are, that's ooh. the one that goes... Yeah, I think that would be a fun one. All, those, um, like the uh, the jug band, like they were always... Oh, yeah. They were always jamming. And like they had a theme. Like I think the country music one is about Rolf being the host of like a radio show or something like that. Oh, interesting. Like they have these really neat little concepts to them, but who knows? And it's unfortunate because unless we digitize these things, unless they're just going to disappear. Yeah, that's true. I kind of want to go through because these are these are some fun ones. I want to go through. Yeah, that would be a fun thing for a, for its own yeah. segment, really. Like, uh, yeah, like you said, Rolf is the host of a uh, he's a VJ at a fictitious uh, country music radio station. Um, ooh, he's got an assisted uh, assistant chicken named Louise. We don't know her. Ooh. Who's that? Maybe it's maybe it could be Rolf's Camilla. Who knows? Um, but Baskerville, Lyle, Mutt, all those like hillbilly Muppet dogs. Yeah. And then that one's got like Roy Clark, Roger Miller, John Denver. So yeah, like they're and very themed. Yeah. That's another thing is the fact that they include guest star moments on these, which was not something that would happen in another set of compilation tapes. It's just so, it's just so difficult to find these you know, on YouTube or anywhere without it getting pulled down immediately by the mouse. Ugh. We love you, but. Ugh. So after that set of videos, we then got from 1993 to 1996 in collaboration with Disney Buena Vista home video. Of course, speaking of. We had Jim Henson video with the so many tapes, so many wonderful memories, but Muppet show related. We got. The two from the It's the Muppets series of comp, it was a compilation series, and then Monster Laughs with Vincent Price, which was the first time that full episodes of The Muppet Show were released on home video. That was, those were the tapes that, yeah, like I grew up on those. Like these are my first Muppet oh. Show memories. Ever. And what a perfect pair to oh give us. Oh my gosh. Cause it, it was kind of cool. Cause one was like, First season, well, it was a little off because one was Vincent Price was season one, and then Alice yeah. Cooper, I think, was season four, three. Yeah, three. I was gonna say three or four, but you see, like, yeah. how like Gonzo and Piggy like completely change. So if you have no idea, you gotta look at them. Oh, yeah. and it's like, what's going on here? What I love is the fact that the cover art for the Monster Laughs with Vincent Price is literally just the promotional photo with Kermit sitting next to him, but then they photoshopped everyone other else Muppets around it. Yeah. I love it. That yep. one I still have that tape. I found it not too long ago. I I do too. It is wonderful. Now something that will become a a uh, common issue was this t even this tape was not free from edits oh um, yeah the vincent price episode had i'm looking through you the talking houses and you've got a friend all cut from it and alice cooper had the over the rainbow segment cut well is that cut from uh Disney Plus too? No, none of that. Both those episodes are completely. No, I'm saying the I'm saying the Over the Rainbow because no. they. That's a really? whole other issue. It's... We'll we'll get we'll get to that yeah, later, yeah. but um, yeah, they so, were. Yeah, this this started the uh, common trend of Muppet home releases having edits on them. Now, is it just me or do you 
tend to watch the Monster Laughs with Vincent Price tape around October, around that time. 1,000%. It's even better now that I have the VHS tape, so I can just pop it in. So I feel like I'm, th- you know. And so, of course, it makes sense that it was released in December. With, like, with the um, the trailers at the beginning, too, it just makes it. We could talk about Muppet Home Video for a long time. <laughs> We're just, we, we decided to stick with Muppet the Muppet Show so we uh, wouldn't be here all day. That's true. So we have the monster laughs with Vincent Price, but then we also have the It's the Muppets double feature, Meet the Muppets and More Muppets, Please. And the can and the canceled third one. That's enough Muppets. <laughs> That's enough Muppets. <laughs> they should Too many Muppets. Too many Muppets. Please stop is the next one. I've had, to, I've had enough Muppets now. Thank you. It's called, uh, and then the fourth one, it's the Muppets. Please stop now. <laughs> um, but these were. Um, Quit smoking in 30 days with the Muppets. Microsoft Windows. Muppets <laughs> teach you. Like, it's the Muppets <laughs> teach you Microsoft Windows. <laughs> oh, that's another. Get a flatter stomach with meet the Muppets. It's the Muppets. Man, we'll we'll have it's to. It's the Muppets improves your golf game. All right, so um, we had the It's the Muppets series has Meet the Muppets and more Muppets, please. Um, and I think both of us kind of like that was, I mean, my first that was childhood. Yeah, that was my those three tapes. So that and then the Monster Laughs. Those were like my introductions to the Muppet Show. So anytime, oh, yeah, anytime I think of the Muppet Show, I think of the majority of these clips. Um, oh, absolutely. So unlike the Playhouse videos, there were no guest stars. Um, they didn't really have anything new. It was just just straight up compilation. So they kind of It was like they took it was like they made a Muppet show. It's like a Frankenstein project. They exactly. Took, That's a yeah. Uh, they took all the episodes of the Muppet show and crafted a Muppet show out of them while cutting away from guest stars or you know when going so far as to at one point zooming in the picture so you can't see the guest star walking to their dressing room it was like it's it's impressive and this was the one i don't know why this stands out so much but gonzo like trying this was like his i think his first attempt like flirting with camilla yes they cut that from the leslie uggams episode they they piece together parts of different episodes but it feels like a coherent story Kind of. Yeah, because they still kind of what they do is they'll they'll take part of the storyline and they'll put it at the beginning, but then they'll also kind of continue with it like later in the episode. So they kind of take a couple storylines and they they kind of put them in it's one. It's the Leslie Uggams one with Gonzo yep. and Camille, and then the Kenny Rogers episode where Kermit's getting the snot knocked out of him constantly. Yeah, like had like these weird like. Um, it's it, the transitions are awful. Yeah, they're they're not the best, but now it's funny because like. Now I see, oh, that wasn't a part of the same episode. No. But they do do a really good job of taking storylines from like different episodes. And uh, so they'll have one storyline and then they'll kind of cut to another one and then they'll have a couple sketches and then they go back to those eventually. So yeah. they did a good job with that. But it's also kind of funny because sometimes they will go like they'll start with like an episode from like season four and then like the last one will be like from season one or two or something. Now, the thing I've always noticed is that the meet the Muppets is more focused on the storylines. It seems like, Mm -hmm. whereas the more Muppets please is more heavily focused on the skits and songs and stuff. Yeah. I think, which I think is really cool because you watch them back to back and it feels like you get a perfect explanation of how the Muppet show works. Yeah, exactly. Minus the guest star. I think it's a good introduction to, like, I wish these were on Disney Plus maybe because then it could be like, you know, somebody is like, oh, like, you know, the Muppet show, like, I've never really seen it. Like, I don't really get it. You know, like, this would be a good intro to be like, oh, hey, um, by the way, this is. This is what it's like. The chickens, the penguins, the food. Like, I mean. And you get a little bit of all of that. Exactly. You know. These were the best. Absolute best. Speaking of the best, the next release of The Muppet Show would technically be the best, as it was Time Life's Best of The Muppet Show, which started in December of 2000 with a infomercial. Oh, my God. You know what? 
my brother actually bought these for me. I think the story was he bought them for me for my birthday. And it was like when he like got like one of his first credit cards or something, I think. And they never came. He spent oh. all this money and he like, they never came for me. And they eventually told me like, yeah, I bought them, but they didn't come. And I was so disappointed. That's so, all. What? Shout out, Michael. Thanks for trying. Woo. Um, no, I remember that infomercial very well. Um, and we only ever got one of the DVDs. <laughs> were they the, they were the same as the, yeah, they were, no, they weren't the same as the, um, the best. They up. were oh, the yeah. same, they were the same episodes, but the DVDs had bonus features. Yeah. And they also had the, um, the Brian Henson intros. Yeah. Which, which were, were really from the cool. Odyssey network when they were showing reruns of the Muppet oh, Show. Oh yeah. The I, yep. Network. Watching the Muppet Show. No, it was Alf and then the Muppet Show. Ooh, an odyssey what a good combo that is shout out to alf, shout shout out out alf. however ha- hope he's doing all right um shout out paul fusco we love you woo um <laughs> but unlike pretty much the future releases and past releases of the muppet show because time life was this big conglomerate who had all the music licenses for their Best of the music of the 60s. You listen to the shower while missing your ex-girlfriend at three in the morning and that kind of stuff. Oh, my gosh. Like, Those, so uh... because of that, there are no edits on any of these episodes. And um, similar to the uh, Playhouse videos, these are freaking expensive. Ooh, do you want me to do a um, eBay deep dive? Sure. As I talk about why they are expensive. Go so, for it. The bonus fee. This is what I believe, at least. The bonus features that are available on the DVDs are not available anywhere else. Like some of them aren't even on YouTube at this point. Um, so I guess it's kind of a well. If you want this, it's here. Or um, and another thing is that the final. I want to say final five. Yeah, final five volumes on DVD where very limited so getting a hold of those is it's gonna cost you a bit if you want them well i think it depends too on um which ones you buy yeah um let's see the best of the muppet show 25th anniversary 15 dvd complete set 14 sealed one not uh, four hundred and forty nine dollars for all of them oh, but one of them is not sealed nice. so if you're okay with that and you're okay with the price tag, go for yeah. it. But um, let's see. Senor Wences, Lola Fanal, Falan, ugh, Lola, Lola Falana. <laughs> Let me say that again. Um, Senor Wences, Lola Falana, <laughs> and Juliet Prouse, $17.99. Um, let's see. There's a lot of s- lot of 12, yeah. seven sealed, five open, 50 bucks. Uh, you can get the Diana Ross, Brooke Shields, and Rudolph Nureyev for thirty, and I think that one's actually a little bit more expensive because the you... VHS tapes are definitely cheaper. Yeah, um, you can get one, two, three, four, five of those for twenty two fifty. Nice. Um, but I think welcome that one to, would welcome to the Home Muppet Shopping Network. Um, for all of you Office fans out there, by the way, Michael Scott, Best of the Muppet Show on DVD. I just love knowing that Michael Scott is a big Muppet Show fan. <sighs> personally no um they got 15 volumes out so that would i think we should explain this the episodes now the way this set worked was it wasn't in chronological order it was just kind of three episodes picked and boop on the volume sometimes there was kind of a theme about around them but not usually the only the only theme that i feel like i remember what it was steve martin gilda radner and carol burnett so it was yes. like comedians i guess and they um, did do they did combine vincent price and alice cooper again and then um, i think the, yep. the third one was marty feldman i believe yeah he was from um he played uh igor and uh young frankenstein yeah so i guess that was kind of a horror theme so they got 15 of these volumes out so that's about 45 episodes okay that's pretty decent which is not half the series but it's getting close we're getting and then disney bought the muppets and they canceled the whole thing 
Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I feel like so we have then to, now one year later though, we would receive the Muppet Show season one on DVD, the full season available for the first time. Ever. So many episodes that had never been available. And it included the sex and violence pilot and the a little bit of the pitch reel and those those really nice Muppet morsels they had. Oh, in yeah. that first season. The pitch reel I actually played for my sixth grade class. I convinced my oh, uh, teacher awesome. we were doing inventor reports. And I uh, I convinced her to let me do Jim Henson. And she's like, what did he invent? I'm like, the Muppets. What? Duh. Uh, so I know I, I wrote a separate report just to convince her to let me do it. And Sheesh. I played the pitch reel. And I think that's when I was like, you know what? They liked it. I can fully out myself as a Muppet fan. I can fully out myself as a Muppet. Sadly, they cut out the what the hell was that all about? I don't I don't think your teacher would have been a fan of that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, it was so cool. Like, I remember going to Target. My, my mom had to go, do grocery shopping. Did you have the, the flock to cover? So it's like the fuzzy yes. Kermit? Yes. Yeah. Now, did they do um, that for all of them? Because m- at least yes, my copies, so. my copies, the only only season one and two are flocked, and then the Fozzy one, which of course that would have been the best, but that one was. I think the I think that one was as well. Okay. Probably just didn't get it. Now, unfortunately, this first set, even though we did get all the episodes, it was that there were some edits made. Um, nothing like super significant but now you go back and watch the episodes on disney plus and it's like oh i where where did that come from yeah there's a lot that i i mean even a lot of a lot of musical numbers which was i mean music licensing is a is a pain in the ass let's just say that which is why we never got the last two seasons yeah and then season two was released in 2007, and thankfully there were no edits made. Looking and doesn't. I don't think um, there wasn't. If anything, there wasn't really. Now the bonus features for the uh, second season, we got the Muppets Valentine Show, which was the first pilot. So they swapped yeah. the pilot. I wonder where they did that. I I've never understood that. That's weird. And then they had this 13 minute featurette of interviews with the Muppets where they were talking about different subjects. And all I remember is there's a part where they ask Gonzo and Rizzo, what was Jim Henson like? And Rizzo goes, I think six foot one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love them. And then they included the Keep Fishing music video with Weezer, which that just that oh, name alone yeah. brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, uh, we were talking about we were talking about how it's it, during that period we went so long without Muppet material that was like oh my gosh, it was such a big something deal. Something new. Yeah, it was such a big deal at the time. So then after that, season three was released in two thousand and eight. And this one doesn't have anything funky with it. It seems to be pretty. And it did have a flocked DVD cover. I just didn't own it. And for season three, the bonus features we got, we got the Muppets on Puppets. Was an it was an old uh, little like behind the scenes documentary thing that Jim Henson and, and Frank, Frank and Jerry Jewell and Don, Don Celine. Celine. Yep. It, this was done in 1968 and. Like, that was so cool to have that available. Like, it had some issues. Like, there were some audio dropouts here yeah. and there. And it's but, it's I mean, cool that they had that before. I mean, because now that's easily available on YouTube. But, I mean, yeah. when these DVDs Back came then, out, seeing that and seeing Jim Henson like that, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. And um, seeing Kermit before he was a frog. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that, you know. Um, another thing they included was it was uh, do you remember the a company of players documentary thing? It was a 10 minute feature about like um Bill Beretta and all the people who are still doing stuff with the Muppets. No, actually. Um, that was on season three. 
Season three. I don't remember it. Okay, but it's honest. on there. I feel like yes. I probably watched it. I just don't really remember it. No. Um, and then we got four of the Perina dog chow commercials with Rolf and Baskerville. Aww. Good old Baskerville. I proudly Classic. use Purina now for my puppy because of those commercials. Information of note for this was a frog is born. A feature on the evolution of Kermit was listed in the early bonus feature press releases, but was subsequently removed. Hmm. I wonder why. Don't know. If anybody knows, let us know. Yep. And then they stopped. And why? Various reasons throughout the year. It's just, I... It kills me. I'm still salty. Like, I know we finally got all of them, but I'm still salty. We got cover art at at D23, which is Disney's big convention. In 2009, they announced the fourth season coming out sometime in 2010. And that was it. That's all we ever heard. In a publicity interview for The Muppets in 2011, mega fan Walter pleads on camera for Disney to release seasons four and five. At at Dragon Con in 2015, Kermit the Frog was asked why the last two seasons hadn't been released and said, I know, send your complaints to Disney. (laughs) And it took six years. Oh my gosh, that's too long. 12 years from when it was announced. 12 years. Well, not 11. 11, I'll say. Because that was in the summer. Too long. Too long. I remember even when Disney even decided to, like when they were kind of, there were rumors about there being a streaming service. Everyone was like, so we're going to get the Muppet Show? So the Muppet Show is going to be on there. Yeah. But guess what? We got it, baby. Woo! Kind of. So. Not a physical release yet, but. So I guess that's what we're, I guess we'll move on to that. And so in early 2021, uh, all these all the Muppet social media accounts were like, we've got a big surprise. We've got a surprise coming. We've got something in the world. Everyone knew what it was. I I think so. I, I was think. either thinking it was going to be either some kind of Muppet attraction, a new at the parks, a new movie or Muppet show on Disney Plus. And yeah. I kept flip, flip flopping back and forth. But um, you know what tweet really, really hinted towards it? And the that's Pepe, what I, Pepe. 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 He said, um, he goes, oh, we got something big. It has nothing to do with me, though, because he wasn't even a thing until Muppets Tonight. So that was a big indication that 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 this is what it is. Yeah. But, you know, somebody over here knew about it. So anyway, so (laughs) then it was announced that the Muppet show was coming to Disney Plus, finally. And... Been about a month. Um, How have you been enjoying it, Josh? I have been enjoying it. Um, did you now? Did you start from the beginning, or you skipped I kinda, around? I started with season four and five. I was like, I just, I need to see this again, right? I need to see this in a non bootleg format. I need to see this without the Disney Channel logo in the corner. Now, were they? They were yes. on Disney Channel for a little bit, um, right? I think that might have been a foreign thing. Actually. Oh, okay, yeah, because I was gonna say I really only remember seeing it on TV on Odyssey. So I kind of just jumped around season four and five. I'm. I'm going to get back into it, but I've also been enjoying showing these episodes to Holly for the first time. She's never, before she met me, she really did not know much about the Muppets. So I've, 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 I've enlightened her into our ways. That's so cool. I love that. And she's, she's making like a list, right? Yes. She's been writing down the episodes that we're watching and then like her favorite parts or who the guest star was. And it's so sweet of her to do that. It's fun to see these episodes that I know so well, that I know by heart. And then it's like, and seeing her first reactions to them. Um, My complaint for it is the Brooke Shields episode not being on there, especially because it's all. And that's just a whole, that's a whole music it's, license. I don't know if it's music I, licensing. I don't know if it's I character believe it licensing. Is I believe am... a music license because oh, I think I asked you earlier, Over the Rainbow. So Over the Rainbow is a um, that one is public domain, but We're Off to See the Wizard is not. The and wizard they, not. MGM holds on to that so tight. So I think that was really the only thing. But the only problem is they could have just cut that out. Um, which 
the whole the yeah, reason why but, well oh no go go with what you were gonna say i mean it's kind of like they cut out the sesame street theme from the marty feldman episode because for whatever reason the sesame street theme that's a discussion yeah. in itself basically some people hold on to song so, certain songs harder oh, than yeah. any others and it's crazy my complaint, however, is the fact that there are episodes that were released uncut that are now torn to shit. The, the biggest one is um, Don Knotts, I believe, where the whole the plot whole... of the episode is kind of just cut up. Now, what did they what did they take out from that one? The lullaby of Birdland yes. was the big issue. Yep, that's right. Um, no, that was a licensing thing, right? I believe so. Okay. I, like we said, the main issue with all of this. the Muppet Show being released over the years has been music licensing, which is just a whole crazy situation. And looking at the edits made to the episodes, outside of literally one thing, it's all the rest are um, pretty intact, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um the I think the shame with that episode is it's on Disney Plus. The whole episode is based around Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. I mean, it was it was such a good one. And they they it is. they even had the Jabberwocky, like I mean, it, it You can get it on the Best of the Muppet Show DVD, but it might be a little That's <laughs> that's why that one's expensive. But either way, I'm really glad that everything is pretty much intact. Now, what I've heard from my inside sources is they are working on restoring these songs. They are working on getting the... Because when the show first appeared on Disney+, Plus, there the, the Kay Ballard episode was missing for some reason, just not there. And then later in the day, it was available. So they're working on this. Yeah. It's also really cool seeing people who have never seen The Muppet Show, but are Muppet fans. Like, they're seeing this for yes. the first time ever. Yes. Like, it's... I don't know. It's... It's cool to have. I mean, it's a it's a cool time we live in. It really for is Muppet fans. Yeah, from I mean, there's like we said, there's that resurgence. They're coming back. I mean, that's yeah. one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast. Like, we just want to talk about it, and we want these people who are new fans and old fans to be able to talk with us, have a conversation, and learn and learn things. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much you learned from this, just because we're kind of bouncing around. But this is our pilot episode, and we're we're doing this for you guys. We're doing this for us, and I think this is going to be a really good time. I I agree. I'm I'm looking forward to this, and who knows? Maybe like the Muppet Show, we're not always going to be the same thing. We might have an episode all dedicated to talking about one specific topic. I mean, sure, we had a long news segment today, but I'm pretty sure next episode, unless we just get a huge cavalcade of news in the next seven days or however long. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that will be the end of our pilot episode. As always, if you'd like to follow us, you can follow me at History Muppet on Twitter or Muppet History everywhere else or Half Hearted JG if you want to follow me, but I don't know why you would want to. And Madison, where do they need to go if they want to follow you? If you want to follow me for some reason at all, uh, Instagram, it's at Hall and Oats Meal. That's Hall and Oats, like the band, and then Meal, M E A L. And then Instagram, it's at Steely Dam. That's S T E E L Y D A M N N N. Or, of course, you could always check the show notes where we'll have links to them down there, wherever they are. Wherever in the, in the <laughs> nether worlds. Wherever we want to put them. We'd like to say a big sorry to Dave Goals. We did not have enough time for you on this podcast. But anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, like, subscribe, throw it at your friends. Um, whatever it is you do, blast it over the school speakers. And we will see you on the next episode of the Muppet History Podcast. The Muppet History Podcast was hosted and produced by Joshua Gillespie and Madison Mantis. Logo done by at Trev on Twitter. Theme music by Brandon Kempf. And a special thanks to Matt Danner. 